Everybody, we're here today to talk about an adventure that I took over to Dubuque, Iowa to visit the Trappist Casket Company. For years, I have known about this company and have always admired the work and the craftsmanship that they do. To get to visit them, talk to the person who started it all, talk to a monk, talk to the workers that are making these caskets every day was an eye-opening experience into the true heart of the company. Um, so it was one of the best moments I've had along this journey of getting to travel and go places and really look at the inner workings of the funeral business. So I want to share with you my adventure to the Trappist Casket Company in Dubuque, Iowa. In the 1840s, the Cistercian monks in Ireland began being plagued by famine. So they sent out a group of monks from the Melloray Abbey to go find a new home, a new place to build a monastery that was away from the plague of famine. So they came across the ocean and they found in Iowa this new Melloray Abbey and it was started in 1849. The monks quarried local limestone and they built this new beautiful monastery for themselves. And they have been there for the last 170 years now, prayerful and giving. And they now bless and make these caskets that anyone as a consumer can purchase and use for their loved ones. So how did this casket business begin? How did the monks get linked up with all this woodworking? So the monks have always had forestry, and giving back to nature as a primary goal of theirs. They have their own woods, they plant trees, they want to use as little resource as possible and give back what resource they use. Sam Mulgrew is a local resident, he's an entrepreneur in the area, and he worked with trees. And he had actually started making some caskets. After reading an article about the funeral business and the need for caskets. And he thought, you know what, we can do this. We have trees, <laughs> we can do this. And so they made some very basic caskets. It seemed like a natural transition for Sam, for the monks to use their forestry to create this product to sustain their living. He was already creating caskets in some primitive form and they would only be enhanced by the monks' skills and by their blessings. And so back in 1999, the first Trappist casket was created and it was used by a local priest to bury his father. As Sam says, it was primitive, it was very basic, but it was blessed. In 2007, the factory and the facility that they are in now was built. The monks that are currently blessing caskets were there when some of the trees that they are farming to use for these caskets were planted. It takes about 75 years for a tree to mature enough to be used for a casket. So every casket and urn that is used and sold or donated a new tree is planted. It is a sustainable way of using and giving back. And that is what the monks are all about in everything that they do. And so over the lifetime, someone may not see that tree grow to maturity and be used, but some of what are being used currently are ones that were planted at the beginning of some of these monks' time at the Abbey. Along with being blessed, each casket and urn will come with a blessing book that is signed by the monk who blessed each of those items. Now, some people ask, 
hey, do we have to be Catholic in order to get one of these caskets or urns? And you do not. But no, it will have been blessed by a monk before it comes to you. One thing that was very important to Sam and the staff and the monks was best quoted by Sam. Important for us, uh, Carrie, to have a relationship with the families because uh, we don't want a, a funeral home just to take possession of a child's casket and then kind of eliminate us from the, the relationship because really what's of value to us is the relationship. Mm -hmm. that the family understands that the monks are thinking about them, the monks have, are praying for them, a tree has been planted in, in the memory of the child. Those things are important psychologically to the family and we don't want to have an additional filter, a different la another layer between us and the family. So it's one at a time. We want the family to understand we are thinking of them. They're more than just a casket that went out. They understand that that is for a loved one of somebody. So there is a book that they keep on site and they write the name of the deceased in that book um, for everyone who has used an urn or a casket. So these are not just sold in bulk to put in someone's selection room, they're sold at need for somebody who is using that item right then. Now that book was important to me. I didn't know about this book until I visited on site there. And my first introduction to the Trappist Casket Company was several years ago when I was burying a teenage boy and the Trappist Casket Company actually called the funeral home because they had seen the story on the news because it had been national news and they asked if they could donate a casket to the family. And they put it in the vehicle, they drove it to us and had it to us in time for the visitation and everything. So while I was there on site, we talked about this book um, and I was able to find the name of that boy in the book from over 10 years ago. And that to me showed he was more than just a, a casket. He was someone's loved one. And they do a special ceremony every year and everybody who has used a casket or urn may come to it. They can find their loved one's name in the book. They can meet the people who created these caskets and urns. And I think that really shows that these aren't just words that Sam says and that his staff says. They are truly in this for serving families and the people who have died, not just making a casket or an urn. Now, as I had said, they had called me to donate a casket for the teenage boy that I was burying when I was at a funeral home. And that is one of the biggest ministries that they do as a company is donations. So it's not all about the income. Um, it's sustaining the monks in their abbey and in the work that they do. But they are so happy to meet that goal. And then anything above they will donate to Catholic charities and to pay it forward. And that's one of the most gratifying things to Sam and to the company and to the monks, but also donating caskets for children. On average, they donate at least five caskets or urns a week to any child who needs a casket or an urn. So they have caskets of all sizes up through adults as a teenager would use, and they will donate them. And that is amazing work that they do to be able to do that. When we know families that are in need, um, especially, or just wanting something special for a child and to be able to call them and say, I have a family that needs a casket because they've lost a child. And they will put it on a truck and get it to you for that individual. That is, it's a beautiful ministry to witness. And I know that they are so pure in heart for doing that kind of work. And to hear them and see them talk about it is amazing. So enough talk, let's go. And we're gonna go check out the workshop and see the work 
hands-on that they are doing in the workshop. We are here at the Travis Casket Company, and this is Steve. He's the production manager. He's been here for about five years, and he is going to take us on a tour of the production facility and show us how they make their caskets and show us the urn area, the upholstery area. So we're going to get a backdoor look at everything they do here. Our shipping area and uh, inventory storage. When the orders come in from the office, they get posted on this board, and then Shipping will take them, and if there's a personalization package that gets lasered on that, they'll take care of that. Otherwise, they'll just go ahead and package it. All these red dots here symbol where the caskets have gone. They pretty much cover um, coast to coast, as you can see. And um, these are the numbers that we, we try to keep track of uh, availability and our target of what we want to keep on hand. That's, that changes daily as you can see. This particular model right here, the number one walnut, that is our most popular. That's our premium casket that we uh, offer. And as you can see, it's uh, been a busy week so far. Today's Wednesday. And uh, looks like we've got about eight of them out of there so far. So. What is your numbers for the year typically? Um, well, typically we will have um, around uh, 15 to 1600 caskets oh. and uh, seven, 800 urns. Yes, to date, well, we, we keep a, a weekly total. This is what we put in last week as far as production. This is what went out. The minimums that you saw on the board over there we just look at that and build accordingly. So right now it's, we're working on pine, which is procured right out of the forest here at the Abbey. And uh, that uh, is offered in two different products. A shape simple and a rectangular simple. This is just some lumber that gets you ready to go into that uh, piece of equipment that's our molder. That will, uh, Screw up all the sides to make sure that we got a nice, even uh, piece of lumber to work with as we go through the process. How many different types of wood do you deal with? <clears throat> we deal with primarily walnut, oak, pine, and cherry. Walnut and oak are, are predominantly the most uh, common ones that are selected. And how much of that is coming from the forest here? Well, we try to get as much out of the forest as we possibly can. Uh, some of that uh, depends on the need. The, the pine is 100% out of the forest here. Uh, some of the other uh, we get when we do the harvest. Again, this is just for our premium caskets. They actually have a hinge lid. So this just takes a little bit longer. The one side. This is all, it starts up again back at the, the rough milling department. They get it, they cut to a certain size, then it gets through uh, several different pieces of equipment. Standing equipment, uh, the longer, 
uh, paper sander. It gets to this point, then this, this area will actually put another profile um, on and uh, put it all together. I don't know if you guys can see this view out here, but I don't think that would ever get lost on me. Isn't that pretty? That they get to see that every day while they're working. And then we will put the tag of Trappist caskets on. And that's how you can know that it's made from Trappist caskets. And then we will put the plastic down like this. a pleat at the end because this will be our starting point. We'll even it up with the handles. And then that's when I'll start draping the fabric all the way around and this will be my starting and my ending point because this will cover my seam when I'm finished. Mm, okay. Would you like me to demonstrate? That? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you can give, I will take. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you from start to finish? Um, it will take, for this one, it'll take me 45 minutes. But like for a number one, you have to put more pleats on and then you've got to finish the lids, which I'm starting right there. And uh, so I'll take about an hour and a half to okay. get those done. Okay. So we usually would depend on if we get the full crew, like today, one of the part-timers are off. So we might be able to get like maybe six to eight, depends on the week, a day. So the foot end's not finished. When do you do a finished foot end? Um, the only time we will finish a foot is when it will be a full couch viewing. Usually like a clergy or a priest okay. will usually do the full viewing. Will it be one solid piece like a full couch? Yes. It, would, it will match the, the top of the, uh, the head of the casket and it will look like it runs all the way through. So. Yes, there's different sizes. Like these are the, my, what it tells me what uh, type of wood is in each container. And then sometimes we gotta make sure we get youth size and child size and infant size. So yeah. And we make sure there's a blessing book in each one that the monks bless each basket. So do they, when do they bless the caskets in the process? Um, they, it's like before when it comes, sometimes they'll bless it over here, or otherwise sometimes they'll in come the in. spray room, or they'll sometimes come in here. And then how do and they mark that it's blessed? Their signature. They sign the book yep. and put it in and at that they time? They sign it, yeah. Okay. Yep. I really enjoy working here being part of this with the monks. How long have you been doing this? Ah, uh, seven, seven years. Okay. So, but I've been a seamstress for a while. Yeah, so long time. Okay. That was my interest as upholstery and seamstress. <laughs> we, 
I think of the family that is in sorrow, so I do a lot of TLC. Yeah. No, we do stock oversized. Um, we stock them in Walnut, Oak, and Cherry. Okay. And we have one uh, simple oversized bolt casket that we offer as a stock item. Okay. But we will, uh, if someone uh, needs to have a special order, we can accommodate the customer for that. You know, we, we work Monday through Friday, and um, based on the need, again, we just keep our inventory filled, and uh, on occasion we'll have our special order that comes in, and, and we can usually get it out in two to three days real quickly. If, uh, if it's something that we know ahead of time, we'll just process it have it there the next day because uh, some of the some of the items that we need to build a casket we actually have on hand so some things we could build a little quicker right well we have a request from a family that just recently lost both the mother and father together and they asked if we could build a tandem casket and it was so large that a lot of the equipment it wouldn't fit in so we had to do a lot of it by hand. Mm. Anyway, we got it all put together, we sent it out, and it was the coolest thing. They sent a picture back of their mother and father in the casket. Yes. And the father had his arm around yeah. his wife. It was the coolest thing. And, you know, obviously we shared it with all the employees, and that's just, when we can do those types of things, it really is just gratifying. I know that we talked the monks are not in here as much because of the COVID-19 virus, but when they're in here, where do they typically work? So, um, we've had them putting on lids, we've had them face framing, um, we've had, in, had them uh, running the glue table, we've had them assembling caskets, we've had them working up in the urn department. So, they've pretty much done a lot of the, the duties here um, that we need to do and they are very capable of, of doing that so um, we try to get them to be actively involved in a little bit of everything down here. Pretty much heads up this department. He also has uh, some other individuals that will come up and help him on a part-time basis but Brian is the full-time employee up here. So. Right. How many do you make a day? Well, it just depends on which style that we're doing. I mean, there's some of them take longer. Like these, these are, are called our simples. And I can do five of those in a day. Whereas different, different styles, I can do maybe three or even premiums are most, are most uh, you know, in-depth ones. I can get two done maybe in a day. Are you making them on demand or stock? Yeah, for the most part, I just try to keep everything in, in stock. Sometimes, keep them in stock. Sometimes we have orders where I make them on demand. If, you know, okay. we get a big order for you know six or twelve okay. at a time, and I'll do it that way. But you now, usually, I just look at the shelves and see what we got, and then just <laughs> make, make a decision from there. Yeah. So what about the engraving? Are you doing that as well, or? No, that, that's done down in the laser department. Okay. So, no, I just, I'll, I'll build them and put them together and then disassemble them and then send them down to finishing. Okay. And then from finishing, it'll go into the laser department and whatever engraving needs done. Okay. We'll take care of it down there.
steep learning curve. But uh, we've done that now, and um, you've seen the woodworking uh, production facility, and you know we're pretty good at what we do. We're the only ones that approach casket making in this manner, you know, with the styles and rails and the floating panels. There are some people that are mimicking us now, but um, it's a pretty unique casket in the industry. To experience the ministry of what we, we do and not the kind of more profane financial side, because we give so many children's caskets away, it's, it's, it's pretty substantial now. And every time we do that, but almost on a daily basis, it reminds us of our mission, you know, and the good work that we have available to do if we if we so choose. So happy happy to say that the monastery stands fully behind that and they find that that's a very worthwhile endeavor. I just want to give a huge thank you to Sam and everyone here at the Travis Casket Company. It has truly been an honor to get to come here and spend time with them, see their process, see how these caskets and urns are built, get to speak to one of the monks from the monastery and do some interviews. During this time, we had to wear masks, which is why I'm doing a lot of this part outside so you can hear me a little more clearly. So I hope that you got a much deeper, better view of the Trappist Casket Company. They do great work for many people. Their child casket program is truly a gift of love that they give to many families who have suffered a loss. You can donate to the work that they do for children right on their website. I will have all that information in the description of this video. You can find out more about the caskets, how to order them, and about that child fund that you can donate as well to these child caskets that they are donating to families. Thank you all so much for joining me here in Iowa. If you have any questions about the Trappist Casket Company, please drop them in comments below. Shoot me an email, carry at carrynorthy.com, or you can email them directly right to the Trappist Casket Company. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.